so much for staying with us. Time now for our conversation today on parents raising our children with disabilities. And remember, you can engage us on our social media handles at KTNUSKE, at Grace Korea KE. At some point, you can also call in live just to send in your contributions uh, regarding the conversation that we're having this morning. And my guests are with me in studio. I'll start with my extreme left, Mr. Rafael Moredi there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Mr. Mr. James Gaita Kabindu, mm. Madam Carol Chege, and this little boy here, this 11 year old, is Banaya Chege Karibuni Sana. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank we are also expecting Dr. Douglas Misiko, a physiotherapist. <laughs> I hope he will be joining us soon because we have really so many questions mm. that uh, we'd like him to address. Um, Raphael, mm. allow me to start with you. And I'd like you to share with our, our viewers a little bit of your journey and why mm. we are having you on set today. Okay, the journey itself began six years ago when uh, we first got our firstborn son, who is Alan, George. And uh, it began like a normal child. We, uh, we were given, we were blessed with uh, a normal child. But uh, at the age of six months, we, we discovered something is amazed about the child. Eh? So what we expected the child to be doing has not he has not made the milestones that he was meant to achieve at that age. So we went consulting and uh, asking for advices from uh, different doctors. And that's when we were told that uh, he had a problem or a condition called cerebral palsy. So that's where we began the journey mm -hmm. at the age of six months okay. until today. Okay. Yes. I'll be coming back to you, especially because you said that was six years ago. Six years ago. Six years ago. You yeah. are young, you know, a young father, you're firstborn. I'll be coming back to you for you to share those thoughts with us. James um, uh, Gaita, if you would help the, our viewers to understand why you ha we have you here today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm here today because uh, I'm a dad to two children uh, with the special needs. Uh, the firstborn, who is a son, uh, called George, is now 16 years. The girl, called Inju, is uh, 11 years. We started over, uh, the, it started like normal ailments. We were in and out of hospital. Then at some point we were told this is disability. And the tag that we got initially, particularly for my son, was uh, autism and some elements of uh, cerebral palsy. Then uh, we got now the girl uh, started uh, heading in the same direction, just like the, mm -hmm. the brother. We st have struggled uh, for about 10 years with both of them, mm -hmm. but uh, we were not satisfied uh, really with the tags that were given because even after trying to manage, there were issues that we were feeling uh, were not being rightly addressed. Uh, we took a journey and took them to India where, according to us, proper diagnosis was done. And we were made to understand this is a condition, a rare condition called PKU, or phenylketonuria. A problem that is brought about by the proteins or amino acids, just one amino acid. And actually, if we knew when the child or the children were young, this is something we would have avoided. So it's about uh, what we call uh, inborn error of metabolism. Mm -hmm. So this is something that would have been avoided. Now today, we have two kids who have intellectual impairments. Mm -hmm are uh, still dependent on OADLs, mm -hmm. but after knowing the diagnosis, the right diagnosis, now we are being able to manage them in a better way. Mm -hmm. Mama Precious, Carol Chagan, Precious is here with us, such a beautiful baby. Thank you so much for joining us, and even, you know, coming with her to studio to share your journey with us. Thanks so much for having us here. I'm here to share our story with Precious. Mm -hmm. Precious is our third born. We are blessed with four babies. Our first born is here, Banaya Chagan. We are blessed with two boys, two girls. Precious happened to be the third born. Now, uh, the pregnancy for Precious was very normal until the last minute during delivery. Uh, what happened is just a normal human error that would have been avoided. But now, they didn't tell us exactly what the baby was suffering until much later. That's when we discovered, actually during therapies, went to CPSK, and that's where Precious was discovered she's having mild cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for us to take in, especially because where she was born, we were told it just, uh, 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 just uh, uh, easy. it wasn't anything to be so serious that she was to recover within a few months. Mm -hmm. But uh, we discovered after two years that she's having cerebral palsy. It was hard to take mm -hmm. in. 
but we started the journey there even though we were told it's mild and uh, so attending mm. the physio sessions we were assured and it's true we are seeing improvement in her that she'll be fine with the time yeah okay yeah. and uh Benaya, you'll be talking to us soon Sindo, right yeah he will be uh, telling us a little about his sister precious soon Raphael, if i could come back to you okay. six years ago you are still a young man but you are definitely younger than this is your first one and uh, the diagnosis is made and alan has cerebral palsy how is it for before even i ask about your wife how is it for you as as a man <coughs> Let me say, it was the hardest part of life. I didn't expect it. I didn't think this was the direction that we were supposed to take in life. Mm -hmm. We were both very young. We were just immediately after, high, uh, after campus. Mm -hmm. So we had this bright future that we'll have a son who is going to take us to the next level. Mm -hmm. Very happy, very young couple. Mm -hmm. But we had to take it in either way because the child has been born. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and the child is given to us, we take the responsibility of the child. Mm -hmm. So that's where we began the process. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard at the first point. Mm -hmm. It was hard at that initial moment. Mm -hmm. But over time, through different uh, conversation with different people, mm -hmm. from our parents, mm -hmm. colleagues, from where we work, mm -hmm. uh, friends, they've given us a lot of encouragement until where we were able to see it's just a normal condition mm -hmm. that happens with any other child. Mm -hmm. It can happen with any other child. Mm -hmm. So we had to take it in and from there we started doing therapies mm -hmm. as, as early as when it was uh, seven months, that's when we began our first therapies. Mm -hmm. Yes. At what point was the diagnosis made? Uh, at six months mm -hmm. after we noticed that uh, his hands were not opening up. Mm -hmm. He could not sit by himself. Mm -hmm. He could not make uh, those, uh, let me say, verbal, some verbal communications. So at that point, is, uh, there is uh, a lady called Dr. Lucy mm -hmm. who, uh, who told us maybe there, must be a, there might be a problem. Mm -hmm. She's a doctor at uh, Ken H. Mm -hmm. She's a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. So she told us it's good we go and look for consultation from other doctors and check if there might be an issue with him because his hands could not open up. He held his fists closed up. Mm -hmm. So at that point is when we had to go and check and what was happening. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, if we could talk a little about your wife yes. and uh, how now this was for her, you know, six months later after delivering this uh, bundle of joy yeah. and uh, this diagnosis is made. Oh, at first it was so tough on her. <laughs> I think that was the hardest point yeah. after we went to for the first uh, the first consultations. So it was so hard on her. She felt uh, demoralized. She felt as if she she was the one who was to carry the whole blame for it. But oft, over and over conversations over the same, we were able to move on and uh, be able to engage on different on different platforms with different people and she has really accepted it in. She has really moved on. She's the one who really takes care of him mm -hmm. as first hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a first hand mother to the child. Okay. Yes. James, if I could yeah. come back to you and I want to pose an almost similar question to what I've asked Raphael mm -hmm. here. Uh, two children. Yeah. If we could actually start with the first one, uh, once the diagnosis was made, how was it for you and uh, your wife? Uh, let me admit, initially, it was not easy. And as most parents are with the special needs kids, mm -hmm. it starts, first of all, starts with the denial. And you see, for you to reach that point where you are told, actually, this is the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as it started with, the, as I have said, with the normal ailments. Mm -hmm. So here we are battling health conditions, and now uh, we are having hope that this is going to improve. But after some time, now the doctors told us, now you need to take another route go and meet this kind of people. Mm -hmm. Now we are told about the physiotherapists, we are told now about uh, these people in a special category. Mm -hmm. uh, we are told now about now diagnosis of uh, disability, and that is now the time this start, starts coming in. Mm -hmm. It was not easy for me, it was not easy for my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, let me say, after some time with our son, about a year or so, mm -hmm. we accepted and started moving on. Mm -hmm. But. When now the second born came and started now joining uh, the club, mm. now it was devastating. Mm. 
First of all, my wife had to quit the job she was doing mm -hmm. and go back home. Mm -hmm. And after some time, the problem became so big, given me, the place I was working, mm -hmm. it became almost uh, very difficult for me to work. Because mm -hmm. you are in and out of hospital. I have told you now this starts as normal ailments. Mm -hmm. So today, the wife is going with the son for therapies, and I'm taking the other one to the doctor. Or she's going to the doctor, and I'm going with the other one for therapies. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you are visiting the doctor with both of the children, mm -hmm. together with my wife. So our routine, our way of life, every pattern was disrupted, mm -hmm. and it was not easy. Mm -hmm. But because at the end of the day you have to survive, we had to put on a thick skin mm -hmm. and know how you're going to manage it. Mm -hmm. And I thank God in one way or the other, we were able to come out of it. Mm -hmm. My wife was able at the end of the day to accept. And uh, let me also say, when you have the first child, mm -hmm. uh, it's not as difficult, or, or rather, if you have two kids with a disability, or three, or more. It becomes very difficult because now other factor starts playing in. We have the society coming in. We have uh, other factors coming in, like uh, people will start telling you now this is not normal. Mm -hmm. There are other causes. Mm -hmm. And so many arguments will be advanced. Mm -hmm. If you're not careful, like we have encountered all this, mm -hmm. you'll buy into these arguments and you'll be lost along the way and you can lose it mm -hmm. for you and even for the children. Mm -hmm. So for us, we have navigated through the waters and now uh, we have found out the best path and we have avoided so many scenarios and today I can say we are successful. Okay, we are managing I, it well. I actually intended to ask that question mm -hmm. on the negative comments that people make. You said people will tell you this is not normal. Yeah. Uh, because especially now for you with mm -hmm. two children with uh, disabilities, what are some of the insensitive comments, if I would call them that, that you know people make either intentionally or you know, when they don't intend it. Has that happened in the first place? Let me admit that it has happened. And it happens to most parents with uh, children with spe special needs. And I, I blame it on uh, ignorance. Number two, we say we are Africans. And Africans, we know we attribute different, uh, I mean, those difficult issues, we try to associate them with something. In our case, you be told uh, this is something matters society. You be told this is uh, matters a spiritual, and still some will stand with you and tell you this is uh, something to do with matters science mm -hmm. and let us pursue health. I mean, uh, the doctors, mm -hmm. therapists, and all that. Now it's up to you as as a parent mm -hmm. to know which is the best way. Although at that time you even knew you are down, and I've seen most uh, parents are coming to this, which is uh, very very difficult. And that is why I always advocate and I always like talking to parents with their kids like mine. In fact, I move a lot mm -hmm. because what is needed, first of all, is uh, you chase away this ignorance. Mm -hmm. First of all, to the ones who are affected. And again, we talk to the community and the society out there. Mm -hmm. We tell them, let, let this matter, matter science be treated as science, mm -hmm. matter beliefs be treated as such, and matter society be handled as such. It is not easy, but at the end of the most important thing is to chase out this ignorance. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, James, when you started this, something you said, you said that if you knew, it could be avoided, right? Yeah. Uh, if I could tie now this with the first question that I asked you and how you two felt. Now, especially finding out that this could have been averted if, you, if there's something that you two got to know. How did you take this information? Uh, if I, I remember very well, we struggled and took these kids to India. Mm -hmm. And when this diagnosis was arrived at, uh, first of all, the a brain MRI were taken. Mm -hmm. For the firstborn, it showed extensive brain damage. Mm -hmm. For the girl, it showed some uh, not much like the, the boy. Mm -hmm. And the report that we were given, mm -hmm. after all the tests, were that, OK, now the kids, there are some things you do you should not expect, uh, of course. Mm -hmm to change uh, very fast. But we were told one thing, that we are likely to live with this condition. Mm -hmm. But we were told this condition could have been avoided if you knew mm -hmm. when the kids were born. Mm -hmm. And in our category, we have this, uh, this is information that is not there in the society. 
I have told you when uh, the first diagnosis was done, we were told this is autism and cerebral palsy. And we accepted and started interventions for now, those conditions, mm -hmm. for a number of years, including taking them to schools. But now here we have been given a new diagnosis. Mm -hmm. This condition, we were told that uh, it is best diagnosed through something we call the newborn screening. Mm -hmm. Now, newborn screening is a, a certain technology that is required. Unfortunately, it's not in our country. And mm -hmm. that is why for a condition like PKU, mm -hmm. which is affecting my children, when you look at the child, in all aspects, it looks like autism. A and I ask myself, how many kids are like this in our society? and we are labeling like this. Mm -hmm. If you go and study about uh, diseases and disorders that come about as a result of uh, what we call in bone errors of metabolism, mm -hmm. you'll find that there are so many with different names. But with newborn screening, what happens, it's like uh, I can give an example of diabetic. You are told that you have this condition. These are the kinds of foods that you need to take. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to do to manage this condition. As long as you adhere to that, you lead a normal life. So in our case, if we had time, I could show you documentaries of someone in the United States who was diagnosed to have the same problem, like my son, mm -hmm. but today is a professor leading normal health life, productive in society, without any intellectual impairment, like my son. Mm -hmm. But because that technology is out there, and it's not here, mm -hmm. there they can be able to avert this disaster, but here we are not able. Mm -hmm. But the worst part that we have in our country mm -hmm and this part of Africa, mm -hmm. is because you only know about uh, autism, we only know about cerebral palsy, maybe Down syndrome. Yes. But we don't drill further. Mm -hmm. but, and the reason is because this technology is not there, number one. Mm -hmm. But I don't uh, edit there. I see it's because of lack of information. Because we, we as parents, we as a society, we, if we know there are a number of conditions that have similar, uh, similar traits like autism, cerebral palsy, and all that. Mm -hmm. They could be many. Like in our case, if you Google about uh, PKU, if you look at PKU in isolation, you see it's a rare condition. Mm -hmm. But if you look at other conditions that are brought about, say like uh, amino acid, we have about 20 amino acids. Mm -hmm. My kid or my children mm -hmm. are affected by just one amino acid, which is called findlalanine. Mm -hmm. But we have about 20 amino acids, nine of which are what we call essential. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other conditions, like we have a condition called tyrosinemia, mm -hmm. which is called now by another amino acid called tyrosine. Mm -hmm. So how many children in Kenya are being affected by this? And the parents are not aware mm -hmm. because we do not have this technology here. And we do not have it because our, we don't have now this information. Sure. And that is why when we left India, we said with my wife, if we cannot be able to avoid this situation about our kids, fine, we'll accept it, we'll move with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will make sure we talk to the much, the, in the, anyone we'll come across. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to a government, we'll talk to a society, we'll talk to everyone mm -hmm. so that we can know about, they can know about something that could be avoided. And I always say, mm -hmm. let that disability which could be avoided be avoided. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. sure. Carol, I'm coming to you shortly, but I now want us to talk to Banaya Chege here. Uh, just tell us your name the school that you attend, what class you in, and a little bit about your sister, Precious. My name is Bana Achege. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in class five. I am, ten, I am 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm in BD Primary School. Mm -hmm. And my sister is called Precious, mm -hmm. Precious Blessing. I love my sister very much. Mm -hmm. I always take care of her. Even when mom leaves me with her, you always take care with her. Mm -hmm. When when she cries, when she sees me, she always now come down. Mm -hmm. So there are times that mom leaves you with pressures. Uh -huh. And how, how do you take care of her? Sometimes I give her milk mm -hmm. and I play with her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Such a beautiful boy. Thank you so much, Bane, and continue with that. Continue taking care of your baby sister, Precious, right? Okay, you're a blessing. Um, Carol, before we take a break, uh, I want you to pretty much uh, share your sentiments regarding what I was asking them and uh, the feeling after the diagnosis, especially now being a woman. You're the only woman we have, at least on the <laughs> panel set. <laughs> so just share your thoughts before we take that break. Okay. Uh, initially, it wasn't easy because... Immediately Precious was born, 
as she was put in, in a nursery for a week. Mm -hmm. So definitely there we knew this baby has a problem. Mm -hmm. Actually, she couldn't even breastfeed. Mm -hmm. I used to express and feed her through the syringe. It was hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hard part of it also is that uh, in that hospital, they didn't tell us exactly what is happening mm -hmm. until much later. Mm -hmm. After three months is when we realized this baby is not growing the normal way. Mm -hmm. you know, the normal milestone that she should have achieved at three months, she wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there were funny things she could do, like folding her hands, some funny angles. So we went back. Mm -hmm. We asked them what is happening with the baby. They look at her, and then we started medication from there. And the journey started there, even though they still didn't disclose to us mm -hmm. much about it mm -hmm. until we went to CPSK. I think it's where, that's where they told us about the cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. where also we were very shocked because we were like, how come they didn't tell us in that hospital mm -hmm. uh, the condition? You know, it, it would have been easier to know from the birth, from mm -hmm. the time that she was, bad. Mm -hmm. she was, she was born instead of knowing two years later. Mm. Yeah, mm. it was discouraging, but uh, we thank God, God has been faithful. Mm. We encourage, I thank God for my husband. Mm -hmm. He's been very supportive. Mr. Bonfast Chegeno, he's watching, hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really loves this baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are a big family. He takes good care of us, mm -hmm. you know, as also we attend to precious. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey, but uh, we are taking it uh, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. But we accepted the hard part of it with the stigma, you know, mm. people also would wonder, like, oh, how comes this baby is always yeah. carried? Yeah. You know, yeah. the baby is not walking, yeah. the baby is not talking. Yes. Sometimes I could even hear people like, I'm carrying her walking. Somebody could say, like, hey, we am totally in soup, but I tell me, I don't it's like, uh, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But as we are like, you know, this is something that came. Mm -hmm. We never went for it. That's it's true. just a, a misfortune that yeah. came. Yeah. So we just want to tell people, when you have a child with mm -hmm. uh, challenges, just take it as it is, mm -hmm. uh, just to get to know more about it. Mm -hmm. Like this one is a, a medical condition, you know. Mm -hmm. It isn't anybody's, uh, like, especially me mm -hmm. being the mother, mm -hmm. it wasn't my error, it's just that uh, something happened. Mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. Like the midwives were not very careful mm -hmm. because they would have avoided this. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, it came. Mm -hmm. So we decided just to accept it mm -hmm. and move on with it. Mm -hmm. We love Prisha so much, mm -hmm. as Bana is saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really support her. Mm -hmm. Like, I can go to the shop. Uh, they will take care of her, mm -hmm. but I'm away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can feed, especially him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he remains to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why he came to support yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And she keeps smiling. Yeah. Such a beautiful baby. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Carol, we'll have to uh, release Banaya after the break okay. because we already have Dr. Douglas uh, with us. Yeah. But before we take that break, okay. you've passed a message to your husband. Yeah. I want you to tell yeah. Banaya something. Okay. Yeah, he's spoken so well of his yeah. sister, <laughs> how he takes True. care of her. Yeah. Still a young boy. Yeah, yeah, he is. But doing all that. Yeah. What do you tell mm. your son? Banaya, huh? you are our firstborn baby, our son. We love you so much, yeah? You came, you gave us the journey of, of parenting. We are blessed, with, we enjoy having you. You are such a wonderful baby boy. You love your siblings, continue that way. Let's continue taking care of Precious as we are doing, and our God will bless you. Yes, wishing you well in life. You are important to us, just know that, yes. Okay, <laughs> that, was, that was so emotional. Thank but you. I love mommy. Yes. <laughs> and precious. Okay, thank you so much. Wow. Uh, we need to take a short break now. A lot of feedback. I see at Real Shadrach here saying, big up to all the parents that take up the responsibility of raising children with special needs in spite of challenges encountered, including having to free up themselves from daily schedules to be with the children. More feedback. I'll be sampling it at the end of the program. Let's take that break. After the break, Dr. Douglas uh, Misiko will be joining us, a physiotherapist. Remember, you can also call in live just sending your questions to the doctor who will be joining us. Send your contribution to the discussion that we've been having so far. Let's take that break to stay with us.